I know, I know, I'm late per usual. What's new? <laughs> hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Sonia J, and I'm back with another video, as you can see from the title. We're on episode 24, and they still won't give the girls a reunion. I wanna give my final thoughts to close out the season. I know I missed like four episodes back to back. Um, I tried, sorry, my nose itches. I thought about coming back and like re-upping and doing those, but then I just decided to finish out 18 and 19 because I already had notes for that. And you can go watch the review for that if you want to. I have that up. And so the reunion came on. I watched it. I reviewed it. I did notes. So I figured I might as well end out the season. Even though I wasn't able to finish out the season weekly like I should have, I still am going to come back next season if they come back next season and I'm going to review it then. Um, this is my thing I'm going to be reviewing every time. The only difference is sometimes I'm not going to be here every week like I plan to, but I will be here every season. So like this video if you like it, subscribe if you want to, comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And though I'm late, <laughs> let's give our final thoughts on the season, wrap it up, and I'll see you guys next year. Well, okay, if you come to my channel, weekly, you'll see my videos. But if you're only here for Teen Mom Reviews, then I'll see you next. You get the point. Please don't mind if you hear my son in the background. We're starting off with Kaya. Zay is out. And him and Kaya are getting along well. Him, Kaya, Tiaza, the family, his mother, Carla, and Kaya's mom, who I still don't know her name. <laughs> They're all getting along. Um, doing pretty good with co-parenting and co-family, is that a word, um, for Amore. And that's good. Honestly, in my opinion, there's not much to give on what's going on with Tiaza and Kaya, Kaya, her segment. And that's a good thing. The only real negative um, is Kaya is kind of worried about how Tiaza might feel about Zay being around and how... You know, like, is she being honest about her true feelings about how she feels about him being around and like, um, you know, how she feels about Kaya and Zay having to co-parent together even when Tiaza is not around. And she says she's okay with it, everything's fine, but Kaya feels like Tiaza's holding back a little bit to try to like, you know, make sure that Kaya doesn't feel uncomfortable or out of place. And she's just also trying to do it to, um, you know, get along to make sure everything is best for more, even if it's sacrificing her feelings. But currently it seems as if um, everything is going good. Now we're moving on to Brianna and um, I'm gonna talk about the last episode. With Brianna, she is talking to us and opening to up to us more about Brayson's arm and how, you know, life is for him and how she's gonna have to get him like, you know, physical therapy and training and um, in the last episode, the final episode, occupational uh, therapy for his arm and how he can learn how to use his arm or um, his nub, I guess it's called, with one arm, having one arm and then one nub. And so she's getting him the help he needs and I appreciate that, that's good for him. I think Brianna's doing a great job. Um, I, honestly, with the last episode and as well as like the previous ones, no real drama with Brianna either, which is good. Good for Brianna as well. Like um, the first season for sure, I would even say the first two seasons. Actually, yeah, all the seasons. <laughs> this season was probably her most chill season, but usually um, it's drama with her. If it's not with the boyfriend or ex, it's her mom. Um, or a girl, ex-girlfriend, whatever, you know? So I'm glad she's finding more peace and she's staying out of drama and focusing on herself, her son, and um, just like getting him the help he needs. So before we get into Maddie's personal life, could we get into the argument between her and Rachel? <laughs> Yo, I had to rewind that because I was like, how did y'all go from being cool? And I was like, y'all remind me of each other. I can see y'all being friends. And sometimes that happens when two people are too much alike, they bump heads. To them arguing over shit that didn't even have to be an argument. And then, <laughs> what was it? I think it was Madison that was like, you can get your daughter and get the fuck out. And I was like, no, don't say that. I'm glad they made up and it was just a misunderstanding, but girl, that was like way ghetto because it turned left so quickly, unnecessarily. I personally can't stand when someone tries to like 
throw something in your face that you can't control or tries to put you out physically, literally, um, just because of a disagreement, especially when it's like, I have the right to disagree with you. That doesn't mean you have to kick me out or disrespect me. However, Rachel, and I've said this plenty of times before, has a habit of like going from zero to 20 quickly over minuscule things. And she's done this multiple times with multiple people. So I'm not really surprised it happened. And like I said, when you're a lot alike someone, sometimes you can clash just for that simple reason. But they made up so good for them. So, um, the whole argument also when they all came together, I wish I would have reviewed that episode, but whatever, I was late to the party. I would say, I would say, I would say that Rachel did start it because like I said, she has a habit and I was gonna also say too with the argument with Maddie of like just saying things that it's just like, even though you feel how you feel or you disagree, you don't have to like yell or get rude or whatever. However, she gets it honest, her mom does that and her mom does it to her unnecessarily at times and she does it back. Um, and with the argument with the girls, it was kind of like Rachel was in the wrong in some ways, but they did lightweight gang up on her at the table. So I can see, especially with Rachel's personality, how she was like, um, I'm getting out of here. You got me fucked up. Okay, let's get into the finale of uh, Maddie's part. I don't even know why I went all into Rachel. We're not even on home. Last time we spoke, she had a miscarriage. It's a few days later. Let's continue to talk about Madison. I kind of forgot exactly where I left off at, but basically Madison and um, Chris decide to stay in Arkansas. I believe that's where they're from. In the process of them both moving back there, they both moved back there separately. Christian is with his family. He is going to do his own thing, get a job, be on his own. She is living with her best friend, Autumn, and her and Christian agreed to meet up to talk about how they were gonna co-parent, what he was gonna do, and then she was gonna figure out what she was gonna do based on what he was gonna do. He decided to stay in Arkansas. She was upset about it. He was like, well, you know, pretty much, well, that wasn't the finale, but basically he, not threatened, but offered in a way, slash threatened, I don't know, to take her because if she feels like she can't take care of him or take care of the girl, the baby, without him, then he'll take her. Um, and you know, so I guess with him being out here now and her needing help as well as Arkansas is all she knows, her friends out there, and then her friend offered to let her stay there. It's like she decided to stay. So she just wants to be young and happy right now. And especially with her baby daddy deciding to stay out there, she's gonna need help. And he does need to help with his daughter. So she's out there living with her best friend. <laughs> and her best friend's brother, who looks like her twin, okay? They must be twins because Autumn and her brother look just alike. Autumn's brother and Madison are now dating and you know, she's happy about it. I don't know if he lives there with her, but if he does, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and I mean, honestly, this relationship is convenient for her. And when you're young and especially a single mom, sadly, a lot of times girls jump into relationships quickly because it's convenient and they jump in, put too many eggs in the basket too quickly. Now. You know, hopefully she takes it kind of slow, but she already has her daughter around him. However, I mean, I'm sure her daughter already knows him because that's her brother, her best friend's brother. So it's a catch 22. So hopefully it works out and she doesn't like fall head over heels too quickly and like, yeah. Also, um, Maddie and her father kind of get in an argument because he doesn't really agree with her choices. And I believe she was upset with him because she felt like he doesn't support her in anything. And he's always negative. And in some ways, I do understand where she's coming from. Um, I see what she means. I do kind of agree where, where she's coming from. Um, and I understand where he's coming from too as a parent. Um, and especially he's kind of, you know, he's an older man, so he's old school mindset. Um, I can see why he thinks the way he thinks and feels the way he feels. However, he has to understand she's young. And um, a lot of people from like his generation and beyond forget that they used to be young themselves and that um, you're gonna make mistakes and that's when you become your best self 
you have to be bold and make dumb decisions to get better and to wisen up. However, doesn't mean that you need to make every and any dumb decision in the world, use discernment. But sometimes you do have to fall a little bit, you know, and also just do stuff that may not make sense to other people, but is best for yourself. So um, I see both sides. Okay, now let's move on to our girl, Rachel. Hmm, a lot. <laughs> so previously before the reunion or the finale episode, um, Rachel got into a big argument with her family, her sister and her mother, um, mainly her sister, but her mother was also kind of caught in the argument. It was a pretty nasty argument. And I would say, if I'm being honest, that I do believe that Rachel Lightway got hostile first. She kind of jumped the gun and she does that a lot. She, If she doesn't agree with you or like what you say or about to say, she'll kind of like snap at you. Um, and she did that to her sister. However, her sister did not have to say some of the things that she said to her. And she was kind of rude and disrespectful with the way she um, reacted, but they both were in the wrong. But if I'm being honest, Rachel kind of got a little hostile first. So whatever they made up in this epi in the newest episode, um, we find out that Rachel and Noah broke up. They break up and Rachel calls her sister. Her sister comes to support her they make up and that's good. Good for them, I'm glad they make up, but it does suck that they have these toxic arguments when they disagree, especially about small things, like damn. So Mallory came over to speak with her about um, the breakup and they talk about it. Uh, Rachel tells her sister what happened, how, you know, she's been feeling about the relationship and why they broke up and how she feels like she hasn't been getting any romance and all the things that she's been telling us. And her sister pretty much was like, you know, I kind of picked up on that, kind of figured that was going on. Um, and then she says that she told her mom and her mom pretty much belittled her and made her feel like she would be nothing without Noah, which is sad and slightly surprising, not 100% surprising that her and her mom got in an argument about something because they always do. But I am a little bit surprised that her mom kind of like, belittle her in a way that she needs Noah. I don't know if it's specifically she needs a man or if it's Noah specifically, but still it's kind of like as a mom, like what mom tries to make their daughter feel like they need a man to survive. Um, in 2022 at least. <laughs> I know moms did that back in the day a lot and some do still clearly. So I guess. And with that being said, we did we do see them get in an argument about that later on in the episode. Um, and also we see her and Noah try to talk again, not necessarily to get back together or rekindle their relationship, but just kind of just to speak about um, the breakup, making sure it's final, finalizing the ending. And you can just tell even from the conversation that he just never was that into her. I don't honestly know why she even really thought he was that into her. Um, I guess because he cared about no, um, Hazley. And that is a big deal to a lot of single mothers. Like, if you care about my kid, if you put my kid um, on a pedestal, then, you know, you get extra brownie points, all the things. But to me, it's just weird that he cared so much about Hazley and that he, he took such a, a huge liking to her so quickly and they weren't even together all that long, in my opinion. Um, but he didn't even really like Rachel, the mother, that much. And that's who he was actually with. So um, that's just kind of crazy to me. It's like usually when people do do that, it's because they want, either they genuinely have a connection, but they already had the connection with the parent first. And then they, you know, purposely or just naturally built a connection with the kids. But in this case, it's almost like he had more of a connection with Hazley the whole time than he ever did with Rachel. That's my opinion, that's why I pick up on it. Every time you see them together, it's not really giving relationship too much. And even she complains about that and says it's not much romance. And then even like, when they talk to each other, it's just not giving that, even the conversation. Like he didn't care much that it was over. It was kind of like, bye, I don't care. <laughs> but I do like Rachel. Hopefully um, her and her family have a better and healthier relationship over time in life. Um, hopefully she does eventually go get the therapy that she keeps saying that her and her family need to get. Um, at this point, Rachel, I feel like if you feel like you need therapy that much, just get it for yourself. Focus on yourself, figure out yourself. 
Your mother's gonna have to do it for herself if she wants to. If she doesn't, then that's on her. Um, but I feel like you need to do yourself too, sis. We all do. Last but not least, there's Kayla. So Kayla and Luke broke up. Look, it was inevitable. I talked about this in the last uh, review I did, like not to try to be funny or rude, but I couldn't wait for this to finally happen because it was inevitable. Knew it was gonna happen. Um, and look, I'm not gonna go deep into it. All I'm gonna say is hopefully they can both find happiness within themselves before they go looking for soulmates, partners. It looks like my phone is getting dark. I don't know what's going on. I gotta go anyway, so let me hurry up and wrap this up. Um, hopefully Luke, if he is depressed, he gets out of it soon and he's able to get the help he needs. Um, and it clearly seems like there's something going on with him. He is very dismissive towards Kayla and it's one thing to feel like Kayla is nagging you and telling you what to do. Um, but she's telling you or asking you to do things that are not only beneficial to your relationships, but to yourself. And even if you don't agree, the way you're responding and reacting to her is very dismissive. It's very barky. You're barking at her. And it's just playing out rude, you know? Um, and I understand there's ways that people can be rude or aggressive without yelling. I do feel like Kayla is not really doing that. So I do feel like Luke is being dismissive towards her. He has the right to feel how he feels, but it's the way he's reacting or the way he's just like, you can tell by his mannerism and his demeanor, it's just very much just dismissive, negative, and hopefully they both find happiness within themselves and they're able to co-parent because the way things go with his family, it can get very messy. It sucks for Kayla that she has two baby daddies that she's no longer with anymore and has a lot of drama with both of them and their families. So hopefully, Baby daddy number three will be her husband and she don't have to go through this. But hey, if that don't happen, then hold on. Listen, you're just gonna have to learn your own, sis. But regardless, hopefully things get better for you. Hopefully things get great and better for the kids, the baby daddy, everybody, like everyone involved. Um, I hope everyone enjoys this video. I will be back next season and I will be back on time regularly. I will, I will try. <laughs> like this video if you like it, subscribe if you want to. I will be back, maybe not on time, but I will be back though. Uh, yeah, bye.